For three and a half years, Rantoul has tried to prepare for an uncertain future. I don't think it's frustration with trying to get somebody in on the base nearly so much as it's frustration with working with the system or working with the lack of a system. Um, you know, when the base closure announcement was first made on December 29, 1988, a team of people came to town 13 days later and explained how easy it would be and what the process would be and all this other sort of stuff. Uh, we had lots of questions at that meeting. Hardly any of those questions have yet been answered. Well, that's a long way down the road, you know, and it's something that really a lot of thought has not been given to yet. There are a lot more, you know, pressing problems to deal with, and then we're probably uh, 18 months uh, uh, to uh, two years away from something like that. You got some ideas? Frank Elliott is Rantoul's economic development consultant. A retired Air Force Major General, he once commanded at Chanute. One of the frustrations is we can't tell someone what that property is going to cost. We don't know whether it'll be 500,000, 5,000, or 5 million. If we find someone that, that's interested in a building or an area on the base, uh, the thing is, well, how much is it going to cost me? We don't know. because. The way the federal government is required to dispose of property, if we could get a, if we find a very interested buyer, we introduce them to the Air Force people or, or GSA people, and and they say, okay, we want we want that. Well, they can't sell it to them. They have to wait until the time the the property is declared excess, and they advertise it nationwide, and then prospective purchasers will submit a closed bid. Uh, there are many things that you run into you didn't expect and one would be we're dealing with one portion of the base out there that may be named a, a historic district. In that case then we have to, we, the property can only be disposed of to people who would uh, live with those uh, guidelines or not even guidelines but impositions. They can't use the property for, uh, they can't change it in any way on the outside, you know. So those are just things you didn't expect to have to deal with. When uh, bases were closed back in the 60s and, and very early 70s, when the, the uh, base, there weren't a lot of bases closing, but when one would close, the base was pretty much given to the local community for whatever they wanted to do with it. Uh, under the public law, we're closed in, public law uh, 526, 100-526 uh, of 1988, and, uh, requires the service to dispose of the base, of the bases, to get as much, uh, to sell them at as uh, fair market, high fair, fair market value as possible to pay for the cost of relocating the existing facilities. Under the closure plan, the Department of Defense provides the village with money for an office for reuse activities. It can be used only to coordinate uses of the base. No funds are provided for the marketing. The village must sell the base. There have been a number of prospects, but no one has been able or willing to sign on the dotted line. The Air Force naturally would like to sell the first choice would be, let's sell the whole thing in one deal. Or if not, let in as large a parcels as possible. So they don't have to go sell that building, that building, and that building, which they definitely don't want to do. Because there are no property lines out there now. <laughs> so we have to establish property lines. And uh, this has been equated by George Soderman, our engineering consultant. Uh, normally you go out and develop something, you have a, pl have a big field, and then you develop it, put your infrastructure in, your property lines, where it'll all be. But here you got a big thing that's already built, and you have to do it backwards. Illinois hosting the Minnesota Golden Gophers from Gusty, Illinois Field, and there should be a lot of home runs in that ball game. We'll tell you more about how the Illini did yesterday in our sportscast in just a few minutes. Time now for DWS News. A state lawmaker from Bloomington says nothing is final, but he doesn't look for state police patrol operations for much of central Illinois to be based out of Rantoul. State Senator John Maitland of Bloomington says negotiations surrounding state police director Terry Gaynor's revitalization plan have produced strong agreement that Rantoul is not the place. Maitland says there is a question about whether a building at Rantoul can be obtained by the year 1994. 
The Cook County Medical Examiner's Office says it will be at least six to eight weeks before authorities know why a diver died at LaSalle Nuclear Power Anytime Plant. Anytime that there's a base closure and there's been a real close relationship between the community and the base, the community, upon the announcement of the closure, feels it's like a death, a divorce. And each individual, including the community as a whole, has to work through that anger and depression just like you would in any other real divorce situation or a real death situation.